Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be actually talking about AC. And uh, I'm going to show you some stuff about capacitors when I connect them to a DC circuit. But really, in this class, we're interest, more interested in what happens when I connect a capacitor in an AC circuit. But like with inductors, in order to understand why a capacitor behaves the way it does in AC, it's a good idea to understand the way it behaves in DC. Now, the cool thing about capacitors, guys, is they're a very simple device. You have enough equipment in your kitchen right now to actually build one because I've got a little drawing of a capacitor here. All it is is a couple of metal plates, guys, and these can be any kind of conductive material. I draw it as a line here, but imagine it as a actual physical plate maybe a cookie sheet, maybe a piece of tin foil, something like that. And then in between those two, they put an insulator and that insulator has a special name. It's called a dielectric. Okay. And then they connect uh, leads to those metal plates and then you connect it to a circuit and it does something cool. So here I've connected my little capacitor here that I made out of tin foil and, um, saran, and uh, saran wrap to a battery. And I've got a little switch here. Now, since this is an insulator in there, you would think that if you close the switch, nothing would happen because, you know, it's an open circuit, right? But the reality of the matter is, <clears throat> this is a battery here, and if this is the positive and this is the negative, what's actually occurring here is I've got a whole surplus of electrons on the negative side, and I have a shortage of electrons on the positive side, and so, you know, there's negative electrons here and there's negative electrons here, but we call this positive because it's basically ne uh, less negative than the negative side, okay? And um, what actually happens if I close this switch is since I have a, and I'm going to be electron flow just for this lesson, okay? Because then we can actually talk about what's actually occurring. If I close this switch here, since I have a whole surplus of electrons here and a lot of them are free to move, a bunch of them are going to actually come around here and they're actually going to stack up on this plate right here guys and so you'll kind of get a whole bunch of electrons kicking around over here they're just gonna make their way over here since they can and so this you know plate becomes negatively charged if you want to say and any free electrons that might have been kicking around over here on this metal plate because there's a shortage of electrons over here they're actually gonna leave and they're gonna come around here and go to here and so this plate here becomes you know positively charged because it's nest le now net less negative than the other plate and when I close that switch what's actually occurring there is this capacitor is charging up okay and uh, I could after I've done that I could actually take a voltmeter and measure the voltage across that plate and even if I open this switch guys after I've charged it I'd be able to measure it with a voltmeter and I would actually measure the difference, the potential difference across that capacitor. And when this capacitor is fully charged, it will actually have the same voltage as this battery right here. All right, guys. So like I said, if I actually close this switch, I would get a rush of current. It would flow over here. A bunch of current would flow this way. And if I took a look at that over time, guys, and I know you've seen this before from level two, but uh, you know, that is the charge curve of a capacitor, right? And so if I started looking at the curve when I close this switch, what I would see is a voltage line that looks like this, right? Where this would be, you know, fully charged, and this is the amount of time it takes to do that charging. And if you're, we're not gonna learn it again, guys, but if you remember from level two, the amount of time that takes Depends on how much you know resistance I have in this circuit here because the more resistance I have the longer all this current takes to flow and the longer it takes to charge the capacitor and you know we could divide this into five time constants and try to figure all that out again but it doesn't matter all right so that's what the charge of that thing uh, looks like now I'm gonna have a look here I got this little circuit that I've drawn on the right here it's basically the same as this one I've put an ammeter and a voltmeter in it here's the symbol for a capacitor if I close if I have that switch open what I would see for voltage guys is uh, you know switches open so there's no voltage right 
and there's also no current. But the minute I close the switch, guys, I get this big spike in current. This is current right here. And uh, all that current starts to flow, and this those electrons start to flow, and I see that as a big spike. But that would only last for a second, and then as this thing charged up, our current would actually decrease until it was zero. You know, we've charged it up. Now it's at the same voltage as the battery. There's current flowing from here to here, a lot right here, and a lot less right here, and that's what we're seeing right here. And then there would be no current flowing after it would be fully charged, okay? And if I took a look at the voltage, you know, I would see the exact opposite there. I would see this kind of thing right here, where that's the charge curve that I was looking at right there. And once it's fully charged, it would sit there and just you know, be charged with no current flowing. All right, guys. Now, the question is, you know, what happens right here after I've closed that switch and I open the switch, you know, what is that going to look like? And a lot of students will actually tell me that if I open that switch, the just, you know, the capacitor will discharge, but that's actually incorrect. If I close this switch and cause the thing to charge and I open it, what would actually happen is absolutely nothing. All right, guys, I would continue to have no current flow and I would continue to have the voltage across that capacitor because it's charged up. Now the switch is open. Whatever electrons are stuck there are still stuck there and whatever left are still gone. And so I would continue to you know, measure that voltage there across that capacitor even after I open the switch. And in fact, I could take this capacitor, you know, disconnect it from the circuit, put it in my lunch pail, bring it home, you know, measure it after supper, and I would still see that voltage there. All right, guys? So nothing would happen if I open the switch. But I can discharge this capacitor if I want to. I actually didn't include any method for discharging it. But, you know, I should have put a resistor here because, you know, probably I'd have a resistor in there in order to, you know, reduce the amount of or increase the amount of time it takes to charge. I could actually put a switch here, right, guys? And that would be, you know, the switch that I would use to charge this thing up. And this could maybe be the switch that I could use to discharge it. Because if I close this switch now, okay, guys, then the electrons that are piled up over here will be able to flow this way through here and make their way back all around here. And what I would see, and what I'm going to actually draw here, is another line where I discharge it. Okay, and I've just closed it. And what I would see again is a big spike in current. So I had a bunch of current when it was charging, but then it stopped and nothing was going on with the switch open. But as soon as I close this discharge switch, I start to see some current flowing. Now, if I'm electron flow and the current when I was charging it was going through this thing in this direction, let's say, negative to positive, when I discharge it, it's gonna go from the capacitor negative, which is here, around this thing and through that ammeter in the opposite direction and come over here. And so I will see a spike in current there, but it'll be in the opposite direction as the charge current. And then as that discharges, the current will go down until there's zero current and the electrons you know, have equalized on both sides of that, of those two metal plates there. And if I took a look at the voltage Guys, it would look like this, right? The voltage would come down until it was zero again, all right? And so what we're looking at here is charging the capacitor. What we're looking here is discharging the capacitor. Now, there's two things that I want you to notice about capacitors, all right, guys? And the first is, anytime I change the voltage, there will be current, okay? Because, you know, closing the switch, that's changing the voltage. Opening the switch, well discharging will cause current to flow again all right so this thing here will try to oppose a change in voltage all right and that's why you used it in electronics as a filter right where you had rectified dc right looked like this really bumpy and you were trying to smooth that out by charging it during this part of the time and then discharging it from peak to peak and you were kind of 
getting, uh, I don't know, this sort of thing going on, right, in electronics where it was filtering the DC. Now, you know, who cares, all right? This is an AC course, Van Andel. Why are you showing me this again? Well, what I want to bring in here is this other note, and I wrote it out for you in advance here so you can see it here. But it's a very similar note to the note that we looked at when we were learning about inductors. Okay, this is our inductor notes. This one says, in AC, capacitors cause the current to flow all the time because the changing voltage is always charging and discharging it. Okay, so if I have an AC waveform, guys, I'm going to connect it here for a second and put a capacitor in there just like that. This waveform, because it's, you know, positive for a time, it's going to try to charge this guy up. Now all of a sudden the voltage is screaming down, and then all of a sudden it reverses and it tries to charge it in the other direction. And so you get a situation, even though there's an insulator in there, that this thing, when connected to an AC circuit, is causing current to flow 24-7. All right? Now... If I say something is causing current to flow, it is also possible to say that that thing is limiting current, just like a resistor when I connect it to a circuit. It causes current to flow. It also limits current. And so this note here, this current limiting effect is known as capacitive reactance, okay? And its symbol is XC. And remember with the inductor, our, it was called inductive reactance. Its symbol was XL. The units for this thing, since it's limiting current, is measured in ohms. Anything that's limiting current in a circuit is measured in ohms. Now we got three things. Resistors, inductors, and capacitors. All gadgets that can limit current, all measured in ohms, okay? And the formula for capacitor is Xc is equal to 1 over, one over 2 pi Fc. And if you recall, the formula for inductors was XL is equal to 2 pi FL. So very similar formulas. You've got to remember that the formula for capacitor has the 1 over in it. And obviously, XC is the capacitive reactance in ohms. F is the frequency in hertz. And C is the capacitance of the capacitor in farads. Okay? Now, a note that I forgot to tell you when I did the inductor was this very important note right here. In AC, capacitors cause the current to lead the voltage by 90 degrees, which is the opposite of inductors, okay? In AC, inductors cause the current to lag the voltage by 90 degrees, okay? So everything about a capacitor is opposite an inductor. And we're going to stop this video here, guys. And in the next video, I'm going to actually take up a little question we're going to try this formula out here. We're going to make sure we know how to do it. All right, guys, so hang in there. Come back for the next video. Thanks.